Hello and welcome to another edition of the Literary Hour. Thank you for joining us on this warm and beautiful Friday. Um, we're glad you're here. Prof, how are you? Yes, Jackie. I'm how doing how was your day? I'm fine, except it was a little cold around here. As early in the morning, there was a, a bottle of rain here. Oh. Yeah, but. Yeah, we had some showers, but other than that, no. yeah. Yeah. So we're glad that you've, you've joined us today. Yeah. Prof, Prof um, decided on a work, so he's going to be the one to uh, 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 talk a lot about that. Oh, today right. we're going to discuss um, how do we think? How do we approach life? Yeah. How do we see life and what, what, what thoughts influence, influ, influence our action yes. and, 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 and how we move forward? Uh, we're going to use as a framework William yeah. Golding's Thinking as a Hobby. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're going to use Thinking as a Hobby as um, as uh, the, the the text for today. And and like we said uh, last week, we're always going to introduce the the author so you can know a little bit about him. And that way, uh, I think William Golding is no is no stranger. William Golding wrote Lord of the Flies. Yes. yes. I think. Like my daughter, my daughters read that book. Everybody, uh, I guess, I think ninth or tenth grade, yeah. they read Lord of the Flies here. Yeah. So Sir William Gerald Golding was yeah. born September 19, 1911. Yeah. He's a, was a British novelist, playwright, and poet. He was best known for his de, uh, debut debut novel, Lord of the Flies, which he wrote in 1954. Yeah. He published another 12 volumes of fiction in his lifetime. In 1980, he was awarded the Booker Prize for Rites of Passage, the first novel in what became his sea trilogy, To the Ends of the Earth. Yeah. He was awarded the Nobel, Peace, uh, Nobel Prize in Literature in 1983. Uh, he's a fellow, he was a fellow, okay, he passed away June 19, 1993. Oh, that's recent, bro. Yeah, yeah. He was a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature in 2008. The Times ranked Golden third on his list of the 50 greatest British writers yeah. since 1945. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So today we're going to uh, discuss one of his essays, the one that he wrote, I think, 1961. Yeah. It's called Thinking as a Hobby. Yeah. And um, without going into too detail, we'll let Prof set the stage. Yes. Um, William, one of the things we, we should keep in mind is that when it comes to writing, sometimes it is not a huge volume that makes your name. Sometimes it is not a huge volume that becomes a classic in a sense. Uh, that is what one might be tempted to say about Golden's uh, essay uh, called Thinking as a Hobby. What he does in that work, and I know we'll come to later, uh, raises the question of how do people think? Why do they think the way they think? So in thinking about that essay, and of course, probably getting to a point of reading it, one should be able to understand why the novel that he did, which was Lord of the Flies, a kind of uh, broke a huge ground. Thinking as a hobby, uh, one also needs to understand the context of the power of the mind. If we are very much uh, observant, if we are more focused when it comes to thinking, when it comes to understanding the power of the mind, we should be able to try as much as possible to feed uh, the power that a mind has with a lot of positive things uh, in looking at 
thinking as a hobby. We want to understand the product of the mind. Uh, critical thinking, creative thinking, and we must understand that the mind is the factory of ideas. So if we uh, uh, kind of groom the mind so well, we should be able to derive a lot of things. Uh, derive a lot of things. It may not be material things, but it may be things of the mind that are supposed to move people, that are supposed to put us in the right frame of mind to be able to become an asset to society. So those are the things we need to think about as we explore uh, the power of the mind. And thank goodness it is not one of uh, gender specific. It can be the mind of women. It can be the mind of men. Sometimes even it is the mind of young people. You know, we are always thinking that um, if you want to find rich mind, rich thinking and what have you, we look only to adults or we look only to older people. But sometimes we get, dis we get disappointed uh, looking only and only at uh, what older people or so-called experienced people are supposed to look at. So these are the things uh it's higher that we are uh, going to hopefully explore um uh this evening for those of you who haven't read the essay william golden uh um, um starts it as a as a young boy it's a narrative essay you know he's and then he moves on to the three different types of, of, of thinkers. So, 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 Prof, let's 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 uh, draw in the audience and please, audience, participate and join us okay. because this, even if you haven't read the the essay, mm -hmm. this is a practical e essay. You can you can apply it to almost almost any aspect of life. So, so the first the first thinker, I guess. So there are three grades, Prof. Yes. Grade one. Yes. I mean, let's start with grade three. Yes, grade three, and move on to yes. Yes. It starts from the base and moves on. Yes, grade three. Yes. So, so first, uh, uh, Golden, he gets his inspiration from these three statues. Yeah. Right. As a young boy, he was always in trouble. Always yeah. going to the principal's <laughs> office. <laughs> always going to the principal's yes, office. Yes, serious boy. <laughs> yeah, and and so he would see these three statues: one of a leopard. Yes. One of 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 Venus, yeah, right? Or, yeah, or, it's Maybe. Venus, right? Yeah, yeah, Venus, yeah, the goddess of love, yeah, and the other of of Rodin Stinker, right? Yes, Rodin Stinker, yeah, and, and he was always fascinated as to why his headmaster arranged it the way he did. Yeah, you know, putting Venus on one side, the leopard on one side, and Rod Rodin Thinker on the other side. So he, he so he, um. He uses those statues, those those three statues, to talk about thinking. Yes. Equating each one. Yes. Each one uh, 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 of those statues with levels of thinking. Yes. So we will start with grade three, which is the most basic. Yes. And 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 Prof, which statue and what is grade three thinking? Uh, you know the, the thing about it first, we need to keep in mind that uh great uh, you we need to think about the fact that rodden's thinker should be one of the highest form that's great one yeah, yes and you have uh the one that is of a mere emotional expression that's grade two. Uh, mere, that's grade three. Mere emotional expression. Oh, okay. Yeah, the base. That's grade yeah, three. Yeah. Now, grade two is supposed to be a mischievous thinker in a sense. In other words, 
this person tends to be uh, polemic, you know, always raising arguments, but not being able to resolve the arguments. Yes, he says to, to destroy, but not to create. Yes. Yeah. They destroy all these comments and what are questions and all that. It is grade one thinker that has the capacity to pose questions and then strive as much as possible is determined to what? To provide answers. So if you, if we apply percentages, Golden points out that grade three thinkers that, you know, do a field thinking instead of thinking through things very well, will have something like 80% of society. He sees 80% of society as being in that category of thinkers, grade three thinkers. Yeah, because because they they are ruled by emotions. Yeah, they are ruled by they, they, and that's the basic instinct. Yes, you know that it. like if 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 you can't argue, yes, you know you 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 resort to insults. Yes, you yes. you you the first thing you do if you're confronted with something you don't understand or something that is that is threatening your space, you fight. Yes. you know so the leopard is always yes. there to pounce yes you know so so the leopard is yes. is great three thinker yes. and and he says it's feeling rather than thought yes, really. and that's where you get the prejudice you yes. get the ignorance yes you get all sorts of base all emotions the there because they are not based on anything yes. but just raw emotions yes that's right so that's the leopard yes. that's grade three yes yeah so Puff, before we even go on to the other the other grades let's talk a little bit about grade three yeah you know so 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 is it wrong to be ruled by emotions i the 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 answer is not a clear cut yes or no i think it's situational it's situational uh and the more serious a thinker you become the more you try as much as possible to restrain the emotional type of thinking. We are human beings and every now and then some emotion sneaks in, but we have the obligation as we rise up, we have the obligation to ensure that we, we uh, kind of restrain that basic instinct of always or almost always be uh, ruled by emotions. That's the thing about it. So the the question of whether or not it's wrong, as I said, is situational. And the more uh, solid you become in the realm of uh, thinkers, the better it is for you as you restrain yourself in terms of being controlled by emotions. It is often said that weak people uh, become slaves of their minds and strong people become what masters of their minds so you've got to keep that into focus when we talk about whether or not uh it is wrong to be a an emotional thinker or something of that sort what's happening so then we move on now to grade two yes and i do i think grade two because it's in between, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it's a very interesting grade of thinking. Because that's the grade, it says, um, the thinker deals with, with contradictions. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it also called, uh, it, uh, uh, grade two cost um, Gordon to lose his girlfriend. <laughs> because yeah. what it is, because, because when you are not on the same level, when you're on grade three and the person you love is on grade one yeah. thinking or you're on grade two and the person you love is on grade one you know or on grade three yeah some people say love conquers or but love doesn't conquer all mm -hmm. <laughs> the so, imbalance yeah the imbalance can really create a problem a serious problem as well yeah yeah because in this grade two that's when and as we say there's a there's a feedback as we say that we make connections. So, yeah. so grade two is almost like the people in in the, the myth of the cave. Yes. These are the people who are in that hallway. 
That's the great too, because now they're seeing contradictions mm -hmm. between the shadows and the light. Yes. Right? And then, although and he says that great two tinker deals with contradictions then and prejudices that destroy without the power to create, and they are therefore dangerous. I don't yeah. see them as dangerous. Uh, I, I see yeah. them as making waves. You know, they are the ones that will 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 will, um, will shake the status quo because they have to think, they have to question why. Mm -hmm. And true, it may be, and that's my my opinion. It may be that they might not have the power to create. Mm -hmm. But those that move from grade two to grade three and, be, and they are on a higher plane, they can create. But grade two is, um, I find it very interesting when, when, um, when he, he, it, he, according to him, he had moved on and his girlfriend, who was, I think, a Catholic, mm -hmm. right? So, so then he started to show her the contradictions. And of course, the, 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 the boyfriend business finished. If, mm -hmm. They said he was subversive. Even the father... So, 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 so the thing about it is that uh, it is not enough. It is not enough to be polemic. It yes. is in, in, enough to find find the vocabulary. You know, yes. you know, there are people who um, have the knack to raise questions and do not sound threatening, yes. but. If it is just like waving your hand and as if uh, you know the other people do not exist, then it is a problem. You can even bring that to the methods of argumentation. And there we have the Rogerian method of argumentation. The Rogerian method of argumentation is more of finding common grounds, being able to understand where this other person is coming from to the table of what discussion and if we are not very careful within the context of the temperament and the language we use then there is going to be a rupture in whatever may have been a very good sort of discussion to put things right so that's for me that's what i see in the process of saying where well, it is good for these people to raise a certain problems or raise certain uh, ideas and what have you but the question is, what is the language you are using or what is the temperament with which you are raising the questions? So, so he said grade two, uh, and I'm, I'm reading from the essay, he said grade two is thinking, grade two thinking is a withdrawal mm -hmm. with ears and eyes open. Yeah. Grade two thinking is a menace to religion uh, menace. and knocks down sex, sex like Skittles. Yes. Right? So, so, so grade two is a withdrawal with eyes and ears open. Yeah, yes. So let's say, for example, let's bring it to the Liberian society. Let's try and stop, you know, being so hot, philosophical and up yeah. there. Let's come down. The Liberian society, if we look at it, and, and, and it's not a monolith. So I don't want to say all people in Liberia. But most people, I would say, are grade three thinkers. Yes. Because when they don't agree with you, the first thing is to insult. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean I mean we're included in that mix. I'm not saying I'm not on a high horse, but I'm saying that it's to insult, to fight, you know, to to destroy, to castigate, mm -hmm. you know, all grade three level thinking and, and, and thinking. Now, grade two is saying, um, but why is this so? Right? Why, why, why is it that this thing is the way it is in our country, right? So they're think, I mean, they're thinkers, but like he says, there's no power to create, but they're asking the questions. Mm -hmm. So you've ele you've elevated yourself from grade grade three to grade two, mm -hmm. right? Right. So 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 you're there now, and you're asking questions, and you're saying, um, and and, and you're making progress because you can you you can detect. The contradictions, yeah. you know, these things are not, um, you, it is true that a lot of us criticize us offering solutions, mm -hmm. you know, but at least <laughs> we are, we, we, we have withdrawn, but our eyes and ears are open because we are questioning. And, and yeah, the, 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 the withdrawal 
may not be the person who is posing the questions or per, the person who might have been glad to answer some of the questions when 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 because of the language used or because of the manner of posing the questions when people a uh, kind of become the uh, 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 become uninterested in what you are saying then of course that's part of why how the withdrawal comes into the picture so uh, instead of kind of uh, celebrating them in a sense one has to kind of you know kind of pause a little and say hey yes it's good to uh, detect contradictions but how are you how are you presenting the case i talk about talking about that let us even think about martin luther king jr and malcolm x you will see that even though martin luther king uh had a kind of sometimes giving some acidic language he was kind of better off than uh malcolm x at least in the early stages of malcolm x's development so we can see that within the context of what we are talking about as far as people uh what a kind of staring contradictions are concerned so you want to make sure that you think about the not only posing the questions but how you are posing the questions the language you are using becomes very much important in the process that's what i see um so so um he 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 shows the hypocrisy yeah. of the teachers yeah like the teacher who says oh i have your best interest at heart yes but he says oh i know she's looking for a husband <laughs> or, the, or the one that says uh, or, or the or the teacher who every time someone passes by a girl he will turn his neck yeah that's you know, right he's, then he's talking about morality yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. he, he 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 shows all that but he says also that he said i found that grade two I, i'm reading from the essay yes, i do. found that grade two was not only the power to point out contradictions mm -hmm. It took the swimmer some distance from the shore yeah. and left him there yeah. out of his depth. Mm -hmm. So, so you've, you've, you've asked the question now, you know, you've said, um, the question is, why is it that, okay, let's say the question could be, why is it that some families are so divisive? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a common, Critical, thing, yeah. you know, and then you start, you start to ask questions. Now, if you were in grade three, you would just be like, oh, that's how they are. You know, I don't care. But but grade two, you start to ask yourself, right? Why is it? Is this something in the family? Is this something that went wrong? Mm -hmm. Why is it? That's why he's saying that you, grade two thinking is dangerous because now you have to start asking questions. And it may be that you may not find the answer, mm -hmm. but you're asking the questions, you know? So I, I, I don't see it. As dangerous, but but mm -hmm. but I mean, I I think that that grade two is normal. It's the evolution, right? You you're climbing the step from grade one mm -hmm. back up to what to the higher plane. Mm -hmm. So 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 then you get to grade three, and he says that grade three says what is truth? You know what? I mean I mean that's conscious finding. I say what is truth. Right? right, but grade, grade three is a higher level of thinking. You mean one? I mean, sorry, grade one. Sorry, grade one. Grade one is the higher level of thinking, which is the statue of Rodin's thinking. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's the higher level of thinking. Um, and so he says that Pontius Pilate, right? Pontius Pilate was a typical grade two thinker because he said, "What is truth?" Yeah. Right. But then the person who says, "I'm going to find out what truth is." is grade one yeah. so let's talk about this grade one yeah. what makes grade one the higher level now let us again keep in mind at least in rough percentages we said uh 80 percent of society 80 percent of society uh works with a, an emotional processing of information and what have you uh, grade two gets in and it's like taking 
up 15% of the 20% that's left uh, where, where the, where the uh, questions are raised, not so much of an interest in providing the, the um, providing answers. And then you get to uh, gray one, which is something occupying uh, 5%. Now, this is productive thinking. That is where you will find scientists and all those people there. Because the question is raised and the individuals within that category have the patience and everything it takes to be able to provide answers to vexing questions in society. So that instead of leaving people in abeyance, instead of leaving people suspended, the gray one thinker comes with a product. In other words, the gray one thinker uh, is within the context of the utilitarian philosophy. What are you going to do with the questions you are posing? Of what interest will those questions be if there are no answers? So that is where the importance of Rewan thinkers will come into the picture. And, and, and grade two, I would say like 80%, uh, well, not 80%, but he says they are the masses, yes. right? They discuss things. You know, the other day I was, I was watching, I think one of the live television where the people were under this, um, intellectual forum but they're just talking yeah you know all they do is is, is just talk discuss argue yeah. everyday politics politics <laughs> but they can resolve it they can do anything so those are the great uh, uh, those are not grade one thinkers i no, mean no, they, those no. are not grade three level three yeah. thinkers because grade three they are not they've moved on to grade two yeah. because they are saying why is this so you know they're arguing amongst themselves it's true that they cannot create the ideal situation or the ideal condition for the country, but they are grade two. And that's why he said grade two can be dangerous. But Prof, I, I will endeavor to disagree and say yeah. this danger that you say grade two, grade two is also the one, like I keep saying, they are the ones that they make grade one possible by oh, asking the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So well, now when they ask the questions, how do you get from grade two to grade one? Because not everybody goes there. No. But, but some That's people why. are able to get there. So yeah. so how do you get there? It is it is developing the consciousness of truth. Developing the consciousness. There has to be uh you know, the possibility of going upwards. Uh lies to a large extent in the consciousness that has to be there for ideas to play out in ways to help society. If your, your ideas, if your questions eventually are just there for a matter of hobby, you know, hobby being that of, uh, of, of course, as we know, you know, pastime type of thing, sometimes this world is not for simply uh, making trouble and let it go go wherever it wants to go. No, there has to be, in fact, uh, talking about that, we talk, when we, we talk about African literature, for instance, we talk about art for art's sake, and someone like Achebe will say, no, we cannot have what? Art for art's sake. Art has to, even Ayekwe Ama, he says that, you know, uh, there has to be some meaning. There has to be a purpose. Yes, of course, um, you know, uh, uh, being in a phone type and what have you has its own release and what have you probably would say that it has its uh, uh, neurotic uh, type of, uh, of importance. But all in all, we have to keep in mind that whatever ideas we develop eventually should be able to be of substance to a wider uh, population in a, in a society. So indeed, you develop, by the time you get to 
uh, grade two, those who go into grade one, they develop the consciousness of the progress that humanity needs to make. So that is that is where they become, I'm talking about the grade one thing, that is where they become a little different from that of uh, grade, grade two. And so they, 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 I guess, I guess, um, the, 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 um, the duty of a country, I guess, is how to, how to nurture these these thinkers yes. to move from two to for, to move from one to I mean from three to two to one. Yeah, yeah, um, um, because because there are ways to nurture it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are ways to 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 um to ask the questions and seek the answers. Yes, you know, yeah, and so that I, is and that is where that is where critical thinking especially critical thinking comes into the picture. That is where at some point too, creative thinking comes into the picture because if you are, if you have the capacity to develop the questions to ask, and I keep saying, and develop the language, develop the manner in which you are gonna pose the questions, then definitely you are on the path to moving on to the highest form which is that of which is that of uh, of uh, grade one thinkers, and that is where again we will uh, dovetail what we are talking about with uh, with reading culture, because the more you find people, you, you, the more you create programs, the more you create uh, projects that will help people think, that will help people read, and that will help people a kind of continue to hold dialogue or conversations, then the better it's going to be because people are then, kids, young people are broadening the scope of how to think and what to think about as they move forward, move up the ladder. So, so I mean, it's almost like what, what we're discussing about how do you know it is good, right? Yeah. Because what it is, is that in order to ask the questions, you must know what questions to ask. Yeah, you must not only know what questions to ask, but you must be willing to ask those questions. Yeah. So, for example, if you're in grade three, if you're a grade three thinker, right, and you're always ruled by your emotions, yeah. and and in this, I I, I I hesitate to say, but in this political atmosphere of our country, right, and everything is, oh, this, 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 so there's always this argument, this tension, right, of this, uh, if you are a, level three thinker the first thing to do if somebody disagrees with you is to shout like we said to insult and go on i'm surprised at you that's sort of a you know that's a big thing. i'm surprised at you but you know can you just imagine i'm surprised at you that's all and then people are supposed to shut up because well they are told i'm surprised at you and therefore it's like being put down and you don't want to be put down that sort of a thing that is that is, that is great three thinkers yeah so, so, but, but the fortunate few that would ask the question and move on to grade two thinkers, right? And they're there to say, but why is this so? Why, why does the court say this? Why is this man here? Why is this person running? Yeah. Those are the instigators. And I use that word in a good way. They are the ones that light the fire to say, why is he running? Yeah. Now, Golden is saying, Oh, but they, 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 they don't even have the answer to that. That's for me, that, that that's not the point. The point is they've asked the question. And there are few people who will take that question and run with it. Right? And they will run, they will run with it. So they will run with it to find the answer and they will move on to level one thinking. Yeah. Our country now is filled with level three thinkers, grade three thinkers. And I'm not talking, for those of who came late, I'm not talking about the elementary school, but this is just Golden's uh, grade three thinkers. I think it's a thinkers, yes. Every country will have a lot of grade three thinkers. Yeah, of course, of course. Because yes. that's nature. Yeah. You know? that's, so that's, that's nature. Mm -hmm. So now we will have to nurture grade two thinkers, right? So grade two thinkers now, are the people who will say, oh, yes, you know, this man is running because because of one, two, three. Not because, oh, I just like the man. No. I just like the man. That's grade three thinking. That's not grade, grade two, two or grade yeah. one. 
I just like the man. That's your emotional response. Yes. You like the man. Great two thinkers say, yeah, I may like the man, but what can he do for my country? That's the instigator. That's the person who says, yeah, I like the man. So what? You know, I can like him and, and I can still feel that somebody else will do a better job. You know? Or he's from my, or he's from my county. He's from my ethnic group. That sort of a thing. I'm talking yeah. about the same yeah, emotional type thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so 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 what 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 can he do for my country? Can how can he make my life better? You are moving now to grade two thinking. You know, so 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 in a way, um, you can apply this to almost anything, you know. Like if somebody says, Oh, Jackie, who who are you gonna vote? First, I can vote, but they say, Who are you leaning towards? I'm like, I'm endeavoring to move from level two, grade two thinking to grade three, you know? And prof, what we always say, know for yourself, yeah. you know, question everything, yeah. you know, and then move up. Don't stay in grade three, move up to grade to from grade two to grade three, to grade wow. one. Okay, so now I so so now I'm evolving. I'm using myself as an example, prof. I've moved from I just like the man. You know, I've moved from, if you don't vote for the mayor, I don't want to talk to you. I've moved from that grade three. I've gone down to grade two that says, yeah, I like him, but he's not the one my country needs right now. My country needs to go forward. So so now I'm, 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 I'm questioning. Yeah. And although he says you can't create, I'm still questioning that. And, and level two is dangerous because I am, I am, I am the instigator. What can he do for me? What can he do for for um for it's the country? Community, that community, yeah. yeah. So now that question has to be answered. And that's what, what we say is the seeker of the truth. Yeah. Like Pontius Pilate asking what is truth. Yeah. Now, for me to move to to level one thinking is to for me to say, let me go and look at his track record. What has he done? Yeah. for my country you know let me see the kind of person he is creating the context of productivity yeah the you, know, you, productivity. you know so so all of those things now i'm moving on to level one mm -hmm. because i'm seeking the truth yeah yeah so i think i think that i think that it is very interesting when you when you talk about about base emotions and then and then create two, which you, you you level off the emotion. The emotions are still there, but they are not the dominant one. The dominant one is not is not that emotion. The, the dominant one is the one that says, "Let me go and find out." And move to level 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 um, one. Level one. I, yeah. I found it very interesting when he met Einstein. Yes. Okay. You know? He. It, 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 it. He, he almost looked like a midget standing by this towering uh, person, this towering hero, this towering, towering uh, 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 giant. All right. And so he was like a kid who melts seeing a huge um, storeroom of candies and what have you said. Oh, my God. And then, of course, he pointed out that uh, from seeing... Einstein, he just said, well, this is the guy I want to be when I grow up and that sort of a thing. You know, so you see he has an elementary mind, uh, you know, in elementary school. Then in junior high school, that's where this whole idea of grade two thinking, being polemic and what have you, will come in. Then he gets to college. So in other words, there are several ways to be able to understand what this guy is doing as he provides the categories of thinkers. In fact, being able at some higher point to see that virtually all his uh, teachers were, were, were in grade three and they were simply being uh, hypocritical by thinking that they were something that they were not. They were not, that's yes. Where you, uh, that's where you find the examples that uh, she, he gives of uh, of the teachers. Yeah, yeah. He he exposes the hypocrisy. Yeah. And 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 if you look at it, um, uh, thinking as a hobby, 
um, it would be great to do a comparative study of, of it with um, uh, Plato's cave. Mm -hmm. yeah, because it's cry. exactly like it. You know, those who were shackled, mm -hmm. they had a great three thinkers. Yes, yes, you yes. Know? That's what it is. Yeah, those who break away, yeah, huh? they are mm -hmm. great too. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the people who have escaped, they yes. are great one. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so so you can you can you can do a comparative study and see that yeah. it's exactly what he's saying. You know, always when 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 you're moving upwards, right? It's more mental than physical. Yeah. It's more you're using your mind. Yeah. To change your situation. Mm -hmm. And not only to change your situation, but to, to change how you look at the world. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, instead of saying, oh, these people, they are all the same. Yeah. Because in, in, grade, in grade three is where you have the prejudices. Yeah. And the things you say, oh, these people are the same. No. This person did this. Why did they do this? Instead of saying, instead of grouping the entire yeah. race or the entire group or the entire gender together. Yeah. You know, and, and we all do that. We all do that. You know, all this, these women, all these men, you know, and, and, and like he says, that's not it. So, so, so coming back to the ending of the essay, right? In the ending, and, and this is when I want us to get personal, because in the ending, he says, and I quote, if I were to go back to the headmaster study and find the dusty statuette still there, I would arrange them differently. I would dust Venus and put her aside. For I have come to love her and know her for the fair thing that she is. But I will put the thinker sunk in his desperate thoughts where there were shadows before him. And at his back, I will put the leopard <laughs> crouched and ready to spring. Why do you think he arranged them like that? That's what we have to, to, to explore. If you That's see, what we are exploring now. Yes. If you see uh, the, the, the symbolism of the, the leopard, it may be, for instance, that Something, some force, some voice has to be the instigating factor. No, let's start with Venus first. He starts with <laughs> Venus first. Yeah, he so said, I will dust started. Venus yes. and put her aside. For I have come to love her uh -huh. and know her for the fair thing that she is. Mind you, in the, in the essay, first he said it, she was dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because that's level two thinking, right? Yes. Okay. Now, now at the end, he says, "I will put her aside, for I have come to love her mm -hmm. and to understand and to know her for the fair thing she is." So, what, why would he put what, Venus what, what, first? What does it mean by fair thing? Because, <laughs> what, because what does... in the middle, he said Venus was dangerous. Mm -hmm. Venus is is level two, mm -hmm. but at the end, he realizes that. This level two thinking is a good thing. Mm. So he will put Venus first. That's what it's, he said for the fair thing that she is. Yeah, a, that's what I'm saying. Uh, to say that level two is a fair thing, that is assuming assuming that, that Venus is supposed to be what? Is supposed, in the first part, Venus was... Dangerous. Venus was the instigator, and what have you? And now she is saying, "Let's set her aside. Let put her in front, in front." <laughs> she said, "Well, I will set her aside. But, um... <laughs> she said, I will set her aside now, because he knows. I know he knows better." To say, I will make her the first thing. But he says, I will set her aside. Then what is the next one she, he, he gives? I'm trying to see um, mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. if 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 he put them anyway when he was younger. Mm. Um, he couldn't have because he didn't have 
the cognitive capacity to do that. Yeah, he couldn't because also he was in the principal's office. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> but he hadn't or even understood all these things. And that is all the reason why when he began to a, a kind of uh, categorize them or what have you, you will see an element of surprise, an element of sadness. The very fact that these people, when he was at a specific level, he probably held them uh, up. He celebrated them. But when he came to the level of understanding what even the thinking process is, then it was like he even went to work and was trashing them. These people we held up high and what have you, not knowing they were nothing at all. They were hypocritical and, and that sort of a thing. So you have to think about that as well. So 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 after he puts Venus in as front, I, so, oh, he puts is, he puts the thinker where there are shadows before him and at his where there are shadows where there were shadows before him. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking now that he put the thinker behind no, Venus or ahead? No, because there will not be shadow in front of him now. That's what it is. Is it so? It's like he thinks that thinker should be what number one. Number one. Okay. Yes. So, so, so if 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 we look at the, the the context of shadow, something that is in front of you will have shadow, right? Yeah. But, in front, yeah. In front of you will have shadow, but if nothing nothing is in front of you shadow will not fall on you you will be clear as far as as far as uh, progress is concerned that's that's what i that, that's what one has to look at okay now now let, let's use his language mm -hmm. oh it's is 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 gonna storm here mm -hmm. it's, it has gotten so dark all of a sudden prof it's like it's like it's like the clouds are, are coming you know it's so sad tomorrow's graduation but i'm telling you it's thick so 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 um so he will set venus aside that does not mean that he's going to put venus in front of anybody he's setting her aside yes so then he takes the thinker level one thinking and he puts the thinker in the front so that no shadow will get in front of him yeah so the, yeah well, no shadow and at his back now this is the part that's very interesting at his back yes I would put the leopard crouched and ready to spring. Yeah. I know what I I know exactly what I'm going to say about that. What what do you think? <laughs> it's, uh, no, the thing about when that's even before we get to the leopard, the idea that that he he sets Venus aside is like saying, well, there is some level of curiosity. There is some level of curiosity. And maybe this thing that we don't we, we we think doesn't mean anything. Maybe it has substance anyway. So it is not trashing it. I would say even though because you say love and whatever. But talking about the the leopard, which is one of emotions and what have you, or something of like that. So it's I guess it's more of uh, there has to be something. Um, inspiring something instigating something uh that should serve as the the gravitas to keep the thinker on his or her toes and that is what i see happening in the process there so this person yes that's exactly what i i i i, I was going to say because the thinker needs that extra push he needs that thing nipping at his back. No complacency. Yes, no complacency. Yes. Yeah, and yet, they, 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 uh, uh, I would say Golden is saying that look, there will come a time you don't need level two thinking because that 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 emotion, that anger, that feelings that we have, they're always right at the surface, ready to spring. So the thinker has to be very careful, you know not to revert to a grade three thinking, which is, oh, I don't agree with you. Oh, you stupid. Look at you. No, 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 no. You have to, you have to have go on a higher plane, you know, and that's what we're saying that yes, the nation nurtures thinkers, but you yourself must, you know, you must also go up the ladder of, 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 of approaches to thinking. 
You know, and, and I think I think yeah. And the thing about it is that complacency in any society kills. Complacency, yes. you know. Even in fact, uh, you can talk about that within the context of the psychology of uh, taking exams, taking tests, and what have you. Complacency kills. It, there is there is uh, in my indigenous uh, language, uh, people say that uh, the pro swimmer so easily gets swept away by the flood. The pro swimmer so easily gets swept away. And that is the same thing we're talking about, the psychology of exams or whatever. Sometimes you become so overconfident that things you are supposed to really look at critically and whatever you do not. And you think you, you are going to have flying colors. And by the time you know what is happening, you are done in by the exam. Similarly so, someone gets to the point of where well, people may be celebrating that person because of being a high level thinker and what have you. If that thing goes, the, the, the celebratoriness, if it gets to that person's head, he or she is capable of saying, well, you know about the, 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 the story of the hair and what, and the tortoise. The tortoise yeah. yeah, very good. And so, 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 so these things are very much important. And I'm glad that he said, well, I'm going to keep, uh, this guy on his toes or this gal on, on her toes. And therefore, there's got to be someone who is always fanning the fire, fanning the fire to keep you going. But the, 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 and the danger, you know, I, I mean, I know people think that, oh, this discussion is so you no know, philosophical, but the danger of any society is for the people to slide into grade three thinking. That is a danger. The, the, because because grade, grade three thinking leads to conflict. Grade three thinking leads to civil unrest. Grade three thinking leads to hate and anger. As he says, this is where the prejudices are. They hate, they anger. Yet, I, I think it was an article... You do need all three. Like you say, it's, it's situational. There are times when anger is called for. But I think, I think that um, the trick is not to make level three or grade three, not to make grade three win. Let me put it that way, if, if I may. Not to make grade three win. You know, because at, at some point you must revert to grade two or grade one, or else there will be chaos. At least that's my reading of it, Prof. No, I. It's it's, it's first of all, uh, there has to be the cutting off of monotony. If you have one uh, level, it's possible that over time, people get exhausted. Um, life it itself must not be a monotony. Life itself must have a variety of ventilation. Now, that variety of ventilation will create moments in which one will call for reflection, one will call for meditation. So it is at that level of pausing it is at our level of reflection that we try as much as possible to see the relevance and the importance of each level. That is why I talked about uh, the question of or the, the, the context of uh, uh, something being situational. The phenomenon we are talking about has got to be situational. We're in one aspect may go, be good at a particular level, but may not go, be good at another level. And another level may have a kind of a disadvantage and people have to think through and get to a particular point. So yes, I agree with you that in society, we, we need that diversity. Each aspect of each territory of the diversity at some point will occasion 
the need to pause, the need to reflect, and then be able to move and say this particular one, even though they kind of sometimes run concurrent, but whatever it is, there is often that element of pausing that is needed, that element of reflection that is needed for us to be able to a kind of uh, uh, regroup and find out precisely how we move from one level and move on to the other level and then of course move on to the other level. Otherwise, people get exhausted. If it is going to be only and only emotional, people are going to take on. That is how reformations and all those things come into the picture. Think about think about uh, uh, Martin Luther. Everyone was going on with this whole idea of yes, you you have to pay, or you you if you if you want to go to heaven, then you have to pay something to their priest so that they will what kind of uh, uh, wipe out the sin or what have you. Then it got to a point and said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? No, none of you, no, 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 I had ever gone to heaven to know what it is. We still have to be able to process a lot of things. I see something rotten. And that's where this whole idea of the 95 thesis and all those things came into the picture. Yet we move on to the point of moving from even the, the Lutheran to uh, several other things, several other and, and you know, Prof, um, um, one of the things I, I was thinking about uh, is like, you know, the, the, these attire shops. Yeah. These, yeah, you know, you know, uh, uh, um, if if you look at them, they are actually grassroots think tanks. You know, they discuss, they question. They are, they have, they, they, some of some some of them have evolved to level two or grade two thinkers. <laughs> Why is this so? You know what is happening here. You know, and it, why it is true, like I said, there are some places where you just talk, 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 but there are few people within those groups that move on up to, to grade one thing and uh, 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 thinking. Because if you say, okay, if you don't agree with me, I, I, I don't want to hear from you. But then you go to these little shops or these intellectual forums, uh, uh, fora, and you're discussing all of these things, you know. That that serves as the instigator. That serves as the as the as the um, what he said as the, the danger element to say let's question, you know. And they can now some of them can move on. And there's nothing to say that attire shops cannot move on to be formalized think tanks, you know. But I think that it is up, not up, but one of the one of the duties of the government is to have an enabling environment for people to question, for people to have the freedom and the agency to go up and down or to question. The problem is when, when you don't have food and you, you don't have the basic necessities of life, you know, it's hard to question when you don't have these things. If you are hungry, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, all I want is food. So the, the enabling environment has to be there to be able. And I, I think that with our with, with with a lot of the shows on uh, social media, even with the literary hour, I think I hope that we are one of them that help people to question why is this so? You know what? Why is it this not this way? Why is it this way? Yeah. There there are two things as we are going on. People need to keep in mind. Again, our focus is on the pow power of the mind. How do we enrich the power of the mind? We have to think about the power of observation. The idea that we are having this conversation, there has to be a process of thinking things through so that we're in the context of even the very attire shop and what have you, and we ask ourselves the question, how are they moving up or are they moving up when people have a conversation, when people have a dialogue, it is important or it is incumbent upon the minds that come to this dialogue to be able to find time to reflect. And reflecting brings in observation of what have you. I talk about two things. The first is the power of observation. And the other thing is strengthening our worldview. Strengthening our worldview. 
what is worldview as you and I know is got to know uh, it's got to be something about the perspective an individual holds on the various occurrences in the world. What builds what builds the worldview? Worldview will come from experiences. Worldview will come from reading. Worldview will come from uh, philosophical thoughts. Worldview will come from religious thoughts and what have you. In other words, that, uh, uh, that composition of things that strengthen the mind, of things that keep us alert, will be able someday to help us move from uh, grade three thinkers, emotional type of thinking, to grade two, posing questions and what have you, and grade one, getting to the point of not only posing questions, but be able to provide answers. The answers that are provided will become the product, hopefully, to be able to keep a society going. It let, is me, let me let me let me uh, come to what, what you said about worldview. Yeah. And I will bring it into the Liberian context. Yes. Okay. You you know, Prof. Um, they, they say when when a frog is under the water, mm. when it sees just the, the top of the water, yeah. it thinks it thinks that's the sky. Yeah. Right? Until it comes out of the water and see that oh no, the sky is even higher up. So a lot of time when we when we travel, let's say we go home. Mm. And we who have traveled, I'm not saying that we have any we have a broader worldview. Yeah. And it's often times that we go home and talk down to the people who also have their worldview. Yeah. limited though it may be yeah. because they have not traveled yeah. they do have a worldview yeah. and i think that like venus pushing to, uh the thinker to level two level two pushing to level one oftentimes it is best if instead of pulling the people like oh come up to level one with me you go down a little let's meet on common ground and let's see how both of us can strive for level one. But oftentimes, those who have reached level one thinking, some, not all, they think that they have reached the higher plane. And therefore, there's no more need to, to interact with people in level two or even level one. And so that's why I really like the ending of this essay. Because what Golden is saying is that you who have reached level one, don't be so sanctimonious or don't be so satisfied. Because at your back is grade three. At your back is the leopard. And you may be saying, oh, you are, you are a rational human being. But one day, something will make you so angry when you look, you start fighting and cussing and you look, you're right back to grade three. So, so there's no, I do not think that the different grades are stationary. You can slip down in, in, in the grades. It's not that because you've gone to level three, you're going to remain there. I don't think so. I think that situations will make you fall or rise according to how you approach the situation or as you say, according to your worldview. It's it's it, the the observation you are raising, uh, very important. Uh, one, you there is like saying you hold a handle to what creates the uh, a, a kind of friction between those who are interested in dual citizenship and those who are not interested in that. There has to be a a, a forum created, even if the forum is not in uh, brick and mortar, there has to be that uh, magnanimity of mind, that understanding of mind as well, to know that we as human beings, even the categories we are talking about, there is a fluidity 
by virtue of the fact that we are human beings. Uh, every human being is uh, subject to certain occurrences in life. So holding those things important as far as human nature and human beings are concerned, there has to be a way of approaching these things in a way. That is what, again, Carl Rogers, I was talking about the Rogerian method of argument, Carl Rogers, he says that every individual who is coming to the table, uh, there is some background that person is coming from. And if you want to make a headway, then you've got to be able to respect that background, however possible, you know, however, uh, you know, a little threatening it may be. So we have to keep. And then Tolmin comes in as far as the Tolmin method of argument is concerned. Tolmin comes in and talks about there has to be a rationality. There has to be a rationale. There has to be a meaning attached to these things about what we are arguing about or arguing for to be able to make headway. So yes, one has to have the temerity. One has to have the uh, you know kind of courage or something of that sort to be able to know the differences uh, that all these things we are talking about, that they pull together. And if we understand them and are able to use them as tools and not weapons, we will be able to get somewhere. Finding the right tools, finding the right language, finding the right mannerism to get, these are very much important in the process. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that, I think that civil discourse, questioning and, and, and working discourse. together, yeah, constantly. Civil discourse, yes. Yeah, civil discourse, you know, mm -hmm. it's so, it's so easy to yeah. be in level, in grade three and just yeah. insult Yes. You know, but you have to, you have to, you have to elevate yourself. You have to question and then move out of that yes. so that the country can go forward. Because if, if, if 80% are in grade three, yes. there's the propensity for, for violence and conflict. Yes. And we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's look at some of our comments. If we, if we have any, um, uh, Flora Evo says exactly, um, Exactly. Control is the key. All is emotion. Yep, I, I agree. All that's level three. That's why we must develop the mind. Yeah, that's what uh, Prof said. And the mannerisms. Yeah, mind and mannerisms. Yeah. You're right. Um, Wilson Boyd said, "I'm watching from Dallas. I, I always enjoy your sh your, uh, your show, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, Wilson. Thank you for for and and let us know about your approach to thinking. If anybody <laughs> wants to." to add how they approach a situation let us know yeah but prof we're coming almost to the end yeah. um we don't have a lot of comments i guess everybody is level three thinker right now <laughs> oh, <don't> say that. <laughs> yeah no 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 no. i'm not trying to be to, to, to make fun i mean people slip people go back and forth so we're just saying that um and and, and like we say you know try and elevate the discussion try and and be civil in your discourse yeah and um and we will we will um we will keep pushing the country to to to, to grade three yeah, um, one, uh, one. i'm sorry sorry why am i keep saying to grade one yeah. putting grade two aside yeah. because we know that grade one i mean grade three is right at the back yeah so we don't want that yeah so prof yeah. I, I, I should give my last words and then you close <laughs> well whatever you choose go <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I think we we would we would turn it around today. So so I want to thank you for for being here with us. Um, we know that um, Friday is a difficult time. You have um, activities and commitments, but thank you for joining us. We'll always be here. Well, not always, but we'll be here trying to um, move the conversation forward. Uh, we thank you for coming with us on this journey. Uh, thanks to Prof for finding this essay. Thinking as a Hobby by William Golden. And next week we'll be here, God willing, with another essay or another book. <clears throat> June 5th, June 16th, we will have um, Susan Lindsay, yeah. who will be discussing her book, Liberty Brought Us Here, um, about the major family. We will do a poster about that. But thank you so much. Um, 
and we will say stay safe and i'll turn it over to prof yeah thank you so much uh, uh what what we just talked about today uh again begins in the concept of definition you know because in the concept of definition you get to a point where you do classification so we we look at thinking as being a broad uh, concept broad uh, phenomenon and yet it is important even though it is fluid even though moving from one category to the other is fluid the idea that we know that there are cornerstones there are concepts or there are categories of of, of thinking is very much important so that every now and then we we should be able to engage with ourselves to find where we are along the grades so that is what we did today we talk about the the least level being what uh grade three thinkers and then we move on to the next level which is grade two and then we go to the apex which is uh grade one we have left you something as we hopefully always do we have left you something to think about at one point in in your journey of life when are you grade three uh, when are you part of grade three thinkers and then another level when are you at the level of uh grade two and then of course the periods mm -hmm. we get to that point and we are asking ourselves the question uh when are we at the level of grade one so let let if it is a piece of fun for us to be able to see where we are along the grades then of course that's fine so we kind of want to thank you very much who every now and then come into our company to help us uh, reflect on some of the things of life hopefully that are supposed to be productive and that are supposed to get us going so that we become access to our communities, access to our own country, and then access to the world. So that being the point, we just hope that uh, you will continue to keep in the business of thinking uh, constructively so that we together will be able to enhance the well-being of uh, the human family. And don't forget, we are all Liberians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are all Liberians. And uh, whether we are grade three, grade two, or grade one, we are all Liberians. And let us always hold hands to be able to elevate our own existence and the existence of the country. Yeah, good night and thank you. Good night. We all are